Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode four of Haiku Talk. I'm your host, Ben Ga, your friendly neighborhood haiku poet. And today we're going to talk about a haiku from the latest issue of Akitsu Quarterly <laughs> from Ejei Ageiba. Hopefully, I got that name pronounced right. Uh, if not, I do apologize, but it's a fine haiku. Uh, so sit back, relax, let's dig in. Okay, so this haiku by Ajay goes like this. Protest march. Potbelly men hold the line. Protest march. Potbelly men hold the line. Now, Right out of the bat, we can see that this uses the fragment and phrase format, just like the pieces did in our episodes one through three, with the first line being the fragment of protest march, and the phrase being potbelly men hold the line. Great, really great. Now we'll go through this line by line like we did all of the others. Uh, before that, though, I do want to say something about um, haiku and politics. Generally speaking, uh, haiku avoids politics and it avoids anything that has an outright specific point of view that draws a line in the sand that says um, this poet believes this and everybody else believes something else. And the reason why that is is because haiku and senryu require that the moment that the poem's capturing is presented to the reader and that moment opens up to the reader allowing the reader to step inside and fill in the space with their own life experience and if you draw a line in the sand to say this poem is taking this political stance while you might think, well, but you can draw, draw empathy in and allow the, um, the reader to see another point of view. Um, it, it also divides, it's kind of divisive and it puts people off and it doesn't allow them the opportunity to step inside the moment and find themselves there. So if you do take some sort of political stance or are engaged in some sort of the moment takes place in some sort of politically charged event. Uh, the trick is to is to not necessarily take a side, but have the moment be open enough so that the reader can step inside and still find themselves in that moment, regardless of where they might be on the political spectrum. This poem by Edge here does this remarkably well. And as I break down the poem, I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate that why, why it works so well. Now, here we go, line by line. That first line, which is the fragment, is protest march. Protest march. So, as I said in previous episodes, you know, your first line really has to hook somebody, really has to get them, get their attention, pull them in, draw them into a moment, uh, put them in a mood, in a scene. And it's a brilliant first line. Protest march. Everybody has an idea of what that looks like, what that sounds like, what that the energy might be like. Now, what this poem does, and we'll get to the phrase here in a little bit, is that it never tells us what the protest is about. And that's the key. That's one of the main keys as to why this poem works, is it doesn't tell us what the protest is about. It just says protest march. 
and we as the reader step into that moment and attach our own thing that we might feel like we would be protesting in. And it doesn't matter where you sit on what spectrum, what, what your politics are, what your geography is, what your race is, what, what your religion is, it doesn't matter. Um, because the poem, the poem is open enough to allow you to insert your own cause into the piece. Brilliant, brilliant protest march. Where does your mind go? Think in yourself as you approach that, that line. Where do you go? What is your issue? I tell you what, you're going to be bright in there. And then the, the beautiful second line, after protest march, you know, where do you go from there? You want more information, right? You know, what's this about? Where is this? What's happening? It goes someplace completely unexpected. Potbelly men. Potbelly men. Hmm. Not necessarily something you expect to see at a protest, much less a protest march. Uh, usually you don't think of potbelly men as being very, very mobile, very active in general, much less politically active or motivated to be active. But that's the line, potbelly men. And again, it's, it's very descriptive, but yet very open. Again, using that suggestive, simple language uh, of, of haiku to give you just enough information to be able to picture who these men are. You have protest march, then you have potbelly men. And what about the potbelly men? We go to line three, hold the line. Hold the line. Protest march, potbelly men Hold the line. Such a great, great moment. And again, using that simple, succinct, suggestive language, I mean, we've got these potbelly men that are, that are moved beyond belief to be out there protesting. People that you don't necessarily think of as heroes. People that you don't necessarily think of as being energetic, active, out there, uh, you know, supporting something. And here they are, not only are they in this protest march, but they're holding the line. They're being heroic. They're keeping this thing together. And that suggestive language here says holding of, of hold the line. What does that mean? I mean, that means that there is some sort of force uh, in opposition to this protest march, some sort of force that's coming in to try to break this up slow it down, confront it. And again, Ajay never tells us what that force is. We don't know if it's counter protesters. We don't know if it's a police force. We don't know if it's, if it's a, a national guard or even, you know, the, the, the army, you know, we, we don't know. The poem doesn't nail that down. It allows us it trusts us, the reader, to complete that bit of information with our own experience. And wherever that first line takes you, protest march, that's gonna be that's gonna inform the whole moment that unfolds before you as you as the poem moves its way down to hold the line to know what this protest is about who's opposing it, why, how it, the, the line is being pressed, and then going to cause you to take a second look at these pot-bellied men and see them holding this line. It's a remarkable poem. It's, again, six, seven words, three lines, fragment phrase, wonderful. And, um, it, it, you know, this is how you do something political in, in, the, in the world of haiku. Very well done. It's a short episode today. Thank you all for tuning in. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. We'll be taking a look at another poem next time from another new issue of a new journal. 
Um, again, this channel is devoted to contemporary English language haiku. Uh, this poet happens to hail from Ghana uh, and sometimes New Zealand. And I think it's important to note, make note of that because uh, contemporary English language haiku is happening all over the world. Um, I guess thanks to the British, uh, English is sort of the default language globally. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's, it's, it's everywhere. You know, there are, there are journals in Africa, in Europe, Eastern, Western Europe, in the Middle East, the Far East, Australia, New Zealand, North America. Uh, it's everywhere, and it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what your gender. It doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter where you sit on the social strata. Uh, these poems, these moments are about being alive and being human on this planet and finding ourselves in nature, with nature, um, and with uh, Senru, it's human nature. Now, I haven't gotten into Senru yet into any of these episodes, but they'll come, don't worry. But it's just another reminder, you know, when we peel away all of these, all of these lines that divide us, when you peel away all of these names and, and um, you know, classifications, we get to the heart of what it is to be human. And this one, protest march, potbelly men hold the line. That's a good human, <laughs> human poem. Uh, one might say it, it could be a senru because it deals with human nature, uh, because this is not necessarily about nature at large. And, and that's true. But at the same time, we also don't know what the protest is about. This could have, this could be a protest against climate change. This could be a protest against nuclear disarmament. This could be, you know, or taking away nuclear weapons. This could be uh, something that very much impacts the planet. That would make it very much a haiku. Uh, if it's strictly uh, protesting the, you know, the, the oppression of certain people within a society, well, that is human nature in the sense that we have that sort of structure of society and, and government and, and you know, haves and have-nots that we don't necessarily see in the natural world. But hmm, is that really, can that exist in the natural world? I don't know. We do find little examples of that here and there, and you'll see a strange National Geographic article pop up or some other sort of um, study that finds, you know, the chimpanzees killed gorillas or, 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 or something like that. So it could very well be part of the natural order. Regardless, we have a wonderful haiku, seven words, again, from the latest issue of Akitsu Quarterly, a mighty fine little journal. It's the fall 2021 edition. And uh, with that, thank you for tuning in. Hit like or subscribe to be you know, add us to your favorites. Uh, ring the bell to be alerted for notifications for new episodes. And thank you for tuning in. Until next time.